Welcome back to the Smart Up Building podcast. Um, here live from the BIM Summit, we are now joined by Ben Grubert, who is an architect and CEO and founder of Ben Grubert Architecture, who specialise in design and construction of villas and holiday homes. So, welcome, Ben. Thank you so much. Great to have you. Could you just introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Ben. I'm founder of Ben Grubert Architects. Like you said, I'm long about 15 years in practice now. Uh, founded my studio here in Stockholm five years ago. Um, I'm a German Swedish designer and architect. Um, yeah, and I'm working on all kind of projects. You could say from architecture to fashion design. I'm doing everything what design. what I can design. I can I really love designing. Um, so I have all kind of projects, and that's also actually how the company works. It's more a group of creatives. Uh, and for each project, we set up a project group, which is working for that project, um, because we do so, so different projects that we need different specialists, you could say, for each project. And that's uh, actually the foundation is a group of creatives yeah. together, um, and also in different cities in different countries, of course, not all sitting on one place together, but uh, yeah, making projects, great projects together. And you mentioned uh, that you're actually from Germany. So, and you've now founded your company in Sweden. How, how's that been? Well, it's actually very interesting because uh, the way you work as an architect is completely different in Sweden and Germany, which faces you cover and, and, and not do and so on. So it's very interesting. And, but I, I love to work in Sweden because, yeah, I love working with wood. Um, that's, that's the material I love most. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, Scandinavia, obviously we have a lot of forests and we build a lot, lot houses yeah. in wood. Yeah. 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 That's very safe. Yeah. Excellent. And back to your professional background a little bit before you founded the company. So what were you doing? I think I saw that you had previously worked with Lava Hadid. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I actually worked a couple of years for Zaha at Zaha Hadid's office. Um, that's also actually where my interest for technology and digital tools started. Um, yeah, I was uh, a couple of years in the competition team there, uh, working on several competitions, and I was also uh, uh, yeah involved in projects in France, uh, uh, Germany, uh, England, of course, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Yeah. What does the competition team do then? What's that in Zalman um, Hadid? That means, uh, I mean, architecture, you do competitions, architecture competition where you compete with other architecture firms and the best one wins, <laughs> you yeah. could say. It's, it's uh, yeah, very easy. And uh, so if you have, for example, a new opera house, uh, the, the city wants to have the best architects to do it or the best design to do it, they make a competition and they invite uh, architects to take part. And then, uh, yeah, you have a certain time frame to deliver the design um, and then uh, yeah the, the winner um, gets often to build the house um, not always but most of the time gets to build the house okay, see your design in reality yeah. that's the competition team I see so uh, coming back to Ben Grubert architecture so as the founder uh, could you just tell us a little bit about um, you know we mentioned that you specialize in the design and construction of villas and holiday homes, but what else do you do as a company? Yeah, we do mostly uh, villas and holiday homes here in Sweden um, because I love doing that because I have 100% control since I'm also doing all the construction drawings myself or in our company with my, my great team. Um, in Sweden, it's really nice to do that because we have this fantastic nature and landscape here. So I love working with that as well. Um, in, in Germany, I'm right now working on a residential complex, one about 200 apartments. So okay. it's a quite big project. Uh, yeah, an interesting one because it's based on a modular system and constructed in timber. Um, so that's, uh, I think, a very good design approach and an environmental approach, of course, and at the same time, reducing the building cost immense yeah, on the site. But I'm also doing like a, a, a different, different kind of design approaches, let's say, or projects. Uh, for example, now I'm working for a cover art for a Los Angeles based artist uh, called Little okay. Ashes and um, was just recently involved in a big art project with a street artist and graffiti artist from Germany. 
Um, so I'm, I'm, yeah, always on the hunt for the next uh, very, very, design, yeah. <laughs> design uh, um, project. Let's say. And as you're here today at the, the Nordic Film Summit, um, you've presented already. Could you just give us a bit of an um, overview of what you have actually presented today? Yeah, I tried to to wrap it up. And uh, yeah, I mean, my presentation was called Punky Texture. Um, generative AI in the architecture design process. And I was talking about how to implement the tools, the AI tools we have today uh, into the architecture design process um, in terms of, yeah, speeding the whole process up, but also m make it, uh, or make architecture great again, I like to say, uh, make it more playful because uh, yeah, we have those tight budgets today. Yeah. Every, every project has actually tight budget in architecture and uh, it helps you to create very fast design iterations and uh, do great architecture in a very short time uh, which allows you to focus all to all the other aspects as well architecture has uh, such as accessibility uh, environmental impact and so on so what exactly does funky texture mean uh first uh yeah, I mean, I really love funk music. That's that's one thing, and uh, it's all about the composition because funk music is not like a like a like a pop song today where you have a A B a chorus part and a bridge and then we're done. Yeah. It's more like uh, funky or funk always surprises me in terms of uh, there comes a bass solo I didn't expect, yeah, yeah. and that's a bit of the same with the design approach if you use AI because. Sometimes it's hard to control 100%, and even if you control it 100%, it will surprise you anyways. So it, it has these funky outcomes, um, which are a bit odd and funky, but in a positive way, I think. So what was the inspiration for it? And you obviously mentioned that you like like funk, funk music, <laughs> but yeah, was there a, a more an inspiration for it? Yeah, I think the main inspiration was and is that I don't want architecture to stand still. I want to develop new design languages, new architectural languages. Uh, and I think this hasn't been really done the last hundred years. I mean, of course it happened a lot, but it was also very repetitive yeah. and uh, I'm just looking for something new. I mean, I've seen some of the, the AI renderings on your website and it does look really funky. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've not seen anything like that in London, I must admit. So where, which sort of, sort of countries is it being implemented already or has it already been featured yeah as, uh, i think in several countries i mean you always have to uh i mean there's 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 a lot of images out there right now which are not built so that's that's i wanted to say it's very important for me to always turn this into buildable architecture yeah building architecture. Um, so you can of course you can create a house made of chocolate but you wouldn't build that so i always look look for it that it's really buildable. Um, and then I think there are many countries which are using this technique already quite a lot. Uh, I think the States are using it a lot. England is also quite, quite uh, front and uh, even uh, Germany. Yes. <laughs> and it's coming to Sweden also, um, of course. Uh, yeah, it's okay. more, more. So can you elaborate on, in your dis description of your um, presentation today you mentioned it will unlock new dimensions of creativity efficiency and problem solving in architectural design could you just tell us a bit more about how it can help with that yeah i mean i see it like it's, it's helping me to pushing the design and architectural boundaries a lot because i can create designs in such a fast way and can can go pretty wide if i want to of course um and then getting also take one step back again to make it buildable, of course. Um, but I, I'm able to push design boundaries very much. And then also it's such a fast way of designing that it shifts the focus or you have more time and space uh, for other subjects uh, in our yeah. profession. And uh, you can, you know, you can, can do great design, great architecture while you're also covering the environmental uh, questions of our time so i think that's it's just makes space um it frees you up to for that creativity basically yeah it frees me up to get more creative i get also 
I think every creative gets gets very triggered by seeing all those images uh, today. Um, it does something with you, and it yeah, it makes you unlock your your mind and open up. I would say. Okay, and you kind of touched on it a bit, but what are the key requirements for designers to effectively utilize it in their their design processes and actually turn it into something buildable? Two things are very hard or essential right now. One is that we don't get scared and we really want to dive into the subject and own the subject as architects and designers um, because I think to hide uh, is completely the wrong approach. Yeah. We need to, to learn how we involve that in our, our daily work. Um, and then I would really wish for that all the big tools we have or great tools we have today like uh, uh, cup tools and, and parametric, parametric design tools and stuff like that that uh, AI tools are integrated into those uh, so architects and designers uh, use them out more automatically I would say okay and again touched on it earlier but how does this whole generative AI design concept sit in terms of sustainability so if you were to create some of these renderings into something buildable, how how do you also make them sustainable at the same time? I think you can learn a lot uh, when w while creating uh, designs. If you uh, uh, look, I mean, I always look into nature to get my inspiration. Uh, so you can learn a lot of natural uh, concepts, let's say, and and natural structure structures, um, and at the same time. Since the design process is so speed up, like I mentioned before, we can really focus on those or address those issues we have today yeah. and have time and, and, and to really go into that and dive into that uh, uh, subject and, and cover it in a different way because you can uh, take a bigger, big, bigger uh, part of the budget, uh, uh, the project for yeah. that part. So do you think you can still have this really creating building and it be sustainable at the same time or does one have to kind of give a little bit no i think uh, you should have it both i mean there's no way that we should ignore beauty or sustainability i think this both has to go hand in hand and uh, uh yeah i can't imagine architecture which is not focused on one yeah. of those parts are you seeing any of it in many places um, you know, are there any particular examples in Sweden or in other countries where there's something that looks very different, but it is still sustainable? Or are we still kind of in the early days of it at the moment? No, I think I've seen some, I mean, I don't want to mention one specific project, but it's more like I've seen some of the really tall timber buildings. I'm really impressed by that. Um, the engineering behind it, of course, but it also make made uh, buildings look different because you have, you know, if you work with concrete, for example, you have uh, uh, you have a longer span, you have more longer openings, and so I mean, the geometry changes by material change, and uh, I think this is great to see that, uh, yeah, that that the city look it's 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 it's, it's looking at different in parts now because. Uh, it's implementing the materials uh, yeah. which we should use. And how can the industry kind of support the adoption of this generative RM AI tech? Is there more, like you said, some people are kind of scared, aren't they? We, how do you change that that sort of perspective on it? What more can the industry be doing to help? I think the key is knowledge. Um, People really need to to get educated and educate themselves and each other about it. That's that's one thing which is really important. And then that the industry, um, like I said before, that you have the tools we have today uh, uh, combined with AI tools, um, that it comes very natural uh, to use those tools. And as soon, I mean, if you have used those tools. You can't imagine 
with uh, life without them, yeah. <laughs> I would say. And we kind of touched on before, it's just changing so quickly. So something that we say today, for example, might not even be as relevant in a few weeks' time. So yeah. again, it's how do people even keep up with that? It's quite difficult to, to see, isn't it, in the industry? What, in your experience, how, how are you keeping up with it or in your, in your company? I think this is rather interesting because it's, it makes me change the design process basically every week. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to stand still. I don't think architecture should stand still. So I think this is really refreshing that we don't continue like we did the last 20 years. So it's every day a new tool out there we can actually uh, uh, yeah, use and, and uh, experiment with, with those new tools. I think this is really refreshing. Yeah, it's good to hear that uh, the industry is, doesn't want to stand still. And, you know, even coming to events like this today, it's something that's good to see so many people getting involved in and really trying to work better for, for the future. Yeah. Um, it's true. Is there anything else um, you would like to add uh, on the sort of whole funky texture um, piece? Yeah, I just uh, hope that it gets more involved in the architecture design process because I really hope that architecture gets more playful again. And uh, since we were focusing, focusing the last uh, uh, years on just optimizing and reducing costs, I think this is a great chance for architecture to yeah, be strong and great again. It's interesting because there was an article um, in London where it, there was a famous architect and he said something about, you know, the buildings in London are all the same. It's making people want to even cure themselves. It's a bit yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's really good to see that there are, you know, new ways of doing things. Um, it's just, yeah, how do we get everyone on board? Yeah. I totally agree because I think uh, uh, most people underestimate uh, uh, what what a great environment does for you. Even if it's great architecture, great landscape design and so on, it just makes you feel good and yeah. makes your everyday easier and more yeah, or greater, I think. And finally, so what what is the next sort of project coming up for you? What can we expect to see from you in the near future? Uh, yeah, the the... A residential building I'm working on right now in Germany. I think this is going to be very interesting how this uh, will turn out and develop. And then I'm also currently, I think this is my favorite project at the moment. <laughs> so I say, I can say so. I'm doing a complete AI animated uh, music video for mm -hmm. artists from Los Angeles. Um, and that will be very, very interesting to see. And also, since, yeah, this really pioneering in, in that field yeah. has really. Uh, would be great to get that project done. Sounds fantastic. Well, I think that is all we have time for today. So thank you so much for joining us, Ben. I uh, really enjoyed listening to you, and I'm sure our listeners have too. Thank you. And we hope to see you again soon.